In the past, I've created some video tutorials on how to compute expected return and variance. And I wanted to create this one because I found that there's some confusion on how to compute expected return and variance. And I think it's because oftentimes students don't exactly understand what it is they're trying to do. And there are a couple of ways to calculate expected return and variance, and it depends on the type of data you have. Now, when you're calculating expected return, what you're calculating is an average of the values of the observation. So it's what you expect or what you think the average is. The variance, on the other hand, is the average of the sum of the square deviations. So the question is, how do you weight the numbers to find the average? Well, if you have something like time series data, that is daily, monthly, or yearly observations, we're going to assume that they're equally weighted. That is, each observation is counted the same in the, when we do the computation. So the expected return here would be take all the numbers, um, all the return numbers, for example, and add them up. That's all this sigma from t equals 1 to n stands for. So sum up. So r1 plus r2 plus r3 all the way out to rn, n being the last observation and then divide by the number of observations. Okay, That's how we're used to doing sort of expected or average calculations. right? If we wanted to know the average weight of students in a classroom, we'd take everybody's weight, we'd add it up, we'd divide by the number of students. But when you do this calculation, what are you doing? You're actually weighting each observation by 1 over n. So we could rewrite this by pulling the 1 over n out and writing it this way. So it's t equals 1 to n of 1 over n times rt. So each observation is going to be weighted by 1 over n. So you can write it this way. Suppose we have these observations, okay, these actual numbers. Three years of data uh, with returns of 5%, 12%, and 25%. How would we do the calculation? we'd add up 5% plus 12% plus 25% and divide it by 3. But what are we actually doing? We're essentially weighting each one of these observations, 5%, 12%, and 25%, by a third. So if we do that calculation, we get 14%. When we calculate the variance, we're doing something similar except instead of dividing by n, we divide by n minus 1 because when you're doing statistics, you've used up a degree of freedom by calculating the expected return. Now, for most of us that aren't statisticians, this isn't, uh, you know, this doesn't make a lot of sense, but statistically, you should divide by n minus 1. And in some cases, it doesn't really matter if you divide by n minus 1 or n if you have enough observations. If you had 1,000 observations, dividing by 1,000 or dividing by 999 isn't going to make much of a difference. But if you have less observations, like in our previous example, where we only had three observations, then it's going to make a difference. And you may recall that the standard deviation is just the square root of the variance. Now, using the previous data, we calculated the expected return to be 14%, and the first observation was 5, so 5 minus 14 squared, plus 12 minus 14 squared, plus 25 minus 14 squared, all divided by 3 minus 1, and we get 102.5. If we take the square root of this, we get the standard deviation is 10.12. So, most students do rather well on this part, but oftentimes they get confused when they see data that is laid out in probabilistic form. So oftentimes we do it this way when the observations are not equally likely. For example, these probabilities might be assigned to different states of the world. For example, recession, normal growth, or high growth. So in this case, we are weighting them by taking the probability times the return in that state of the world plus the probability times the state the next state in the world plus the last probability times the final return in that state of the world notice that when we do this we get a slightly lower average or expected return why because before 
the first and the third observations were both weighted the same okay as the middle observation but here the middle observation 12 percent is actually weighted more heavily than the other two and you know if you have a hard time thinking about this we do this all the time uh, in class you know you might have the midterm counts 25 percent the term project counts 50 percent and the final exam counts 25 percent and you calculate your class class average using this type of formula now when you're calculating the variance you do the same thing you take the squared deviation so 5 minus the 13.5 we just calculated square it and then multiply it by the weight now here's where I find students run into difficulty they will do this part of the calculation and then they will divide by n minus 1 but you don't want to do that you've already weighted the observations so you should not divide by n or n minus 1 so if you do this you get a variance of 52.25 okay so lower variance and if you take the square root of that you get a standard deviation of 7.23 so if you keep in mind that these probabilities are the way we're weighting these observations then hopefully you won't also think to divide by n or n minus 1 so I hope that clarifies a point I see it, it's a common mistake I see students make on homework and exams and I wanted to clarify that point